Well, fellow Ghanaians, it's the first day evening, and thank you very much for joining us on our front on the Joy News channel. My name is Winston Amwa. So it's been a day that many of you have been talking about, uh, you know, uh, birth certificates not being a proof of citizenship as a result of the ruling by the Supreme Court. You've been asking yourself lots and lots and lots of questions. Well, the Supreme Court, in its ruling, you know, the NDC uh, versus the Electoral Commission case, the uh, ruling actually came out earlier, but the reasons were released yesterday. And according to the Supreme Court, well, birth certificate is not a form of identification. It does not establish the identity of the bearer nor does it link the holder with the information on the certificate. And according to the Supreme Court, quite obviously, it provides no evidence of citizenship. Now, that's got many of you talking, and it's got many of you confused because you've asked a question, so what's happened to the usage of birth certificates? In fact, the National Identification Authority, as you can see on your screen, it says person to section Eight one of the National Identification Register Act, uh, 2008 Act 750, as substituted by Section 3A of the National Identity Register Amendment Act, 2017 Act 950, a citizen of Ghana is required to submit any of the following identity documents to register and be issued with the National Identity Card, that's the Ghana Card A, a birth certificate. B, a valid passport, a valid certificate of acquired citizenship, and any other information as may be acquired by the authority. So that clearly gives you the indication that, you know, this is something that has been used. And as you could see, uh, it continues and talk about, to talk about all of this. And also, when it comes to the acquisition of passports, which have become the necessary document for, uh, you know, getting a voter's register card or ID, it says what you need to apply for the passport. First on the list is the birth certificate, which happens to be the proof of Ghanaian citizenship. So as many of you have become confused and have asked yourself the question, what has happened to all the documents that have been acquired since, according to the Supreme Court, the birth certificate is not a proof of identification because there's no evidence to connect or link the owner to what we see by way of name and the parents. Today on our front, our focus is very simple. Our focus is on when your birth certificate doesn't matter. A critique of the Supreme Court rule. My name is Winston Amwa. Thank you very much for joining us. When I return after this break, I've got capable persons who will be helping us analyze it. We're going to analyze it from the a legal point of view, we'll look at it also from the political perspective after this break. All right, so welcome back uh, from uh, that short break, and uh, thank you very much for staying with us. This is Afront on the Journeys channel, and I am Winston Amon, and of course uh, today we're delving deep into the ruling of the Supreme Court, which says that the birth certificates are not a proof of uh, citizenship. And it's got many of you asking yourself questions and asking whether you know, all the documents that you've acquired using your birth certificate is actually still uh, valid. And so to help us have a better understanding and to get uh, perspectives on this, we've been joined uh, via Zoom by the Member of Parliament for Offensive South and also the Chairman of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee in Parliament, Honorable Ben Abdallah-Banda. And also we've been joined by Bobby Banson, who is a private legal practitioner. Honorable uh, Ben Abdallah-Banda and Bobby Banson, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening, Winston. Good evening, and, and I believe that. Here. Great, great, great. Let me start off with you, uh, Honourable Ben Abdallah. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that um, you know, in acquiring your passports and all of that, you certainly would have used your birth certificate, right? Rightly so. I used my birth certificate. So how does it feel knowing and reading the Supreme Court's ruling that's or judgment that says birth certificates? are not a proof of citizenship. Yes, um, the ruling or the judgment of the Supreme Court that birth certificate is not um, a form of identification so far as registration uh, of 
potential registrants in this concern didn't come as a surprise um, to me. Winston, you recall that in both CI 72 and CI 91, uh, these two regulations that were used for electoral purposes uh, did not specify anywhere that their registration or BEF set should be a basis for registration. That is number one. And I believe the Supreme Court made a reference to that. And when you read the law, that is the Registration of Deaths and Deaths Act, 1965, Act 301, which establishes the legal regime for registration of death and death. If you read the long title, the, the long title gives us a resume of what the whole act is about. Mm. The long title is to the effect that registration of death or death, or registration, I mean, a birth certificate only establishes evidence of birth, but it doesn't establish evidence of nationality or citizenship. And uh, it, that, that, that does it. But in some other jurisdictions, birth certificate is one of the valid or reliable documents that can be used to prove somebody's nationality. But in this part of our world, because of the way our birth and death registry is structured, which is so centralized. And that processes even leading to the procurement of a birth certificate are not as robust as one would expect. Somebody can just walk into the office or into the office of a birth and death registry and upon the person given information about him or herself, the person can, within a few uh, days, procure a birth certificate. So it has rendered the whole exercise of procuring a birth certificate woefully unreliable. Mm. So, so let's on look the at, basis of this, let's look at one I thing. I don't think that it will be prudent okay. and um, uh, fair and just for um, the EC to rely on a birth certificate as a basis for proving somebody's nationality or somebody's Ghanaian. Okay. So wholly uh, and or completely, I agree with the position taken by the Supreme Court that a birth certificate is even worse than a national health insurance card. Great. So you talked about the fact that in other jurisdictions, that is the case. But if you look at, uh, you know, the application for passport, for instance, it says uh, before you apply, uh, first timers, what you need to apply for the passport. And it says birth certificates, into bracket, proof of Ghanaian citizenship. Honorable Ben Abdullah, reference is made to the birth certificate as a proof of Ghanaian citizenship. Now... Are you saying that all this while when we've used a birth certificate as a proof of Ghanaian citizenship, as we can see on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website for the acquisition of passports, that has been done wrongly? Yes. Um, I would say that has been done wrongly. But what I would say is that if you look at the form, which contains um, a, um, a column, that is the form uh, of the... Um, passport, which contains the column or the provision that you refer to, that alone will not be enough for somebody to be given a passport. You know, on the passport form, there is a lot more information that you have to provide. There is a provision, um, a space to be filled um, for, uh, uh, in respect of your parents. And there is also a space that has to be filled 
by a guarantor. And there is also a space that has to be filled by witnesses. All these people are tests. So, I mean, if they so do, we will be attesting to the accuracy or the authenticity of the information that you as the applicant have provided. So in case, for instance, a witness should attest to information which the witness knows to be false, or a guarantor should attest to uh, the accuracy or the authenticity of the information provided on the form by the applicant, which the guarantor knows uh, to be false, you know the legal consequences that will ensue. Okay. So the difference between uh, a process leading to the procurement of a birth sex and a process leading to the procurement of a, a passport. I mean, the difference is, is, is so wide. Yes, but I, that, yes, but I don't know about yes. if, if, if you look at it here, the, I mean, this is, yes, it is true that there are witnesses who would guarantee for you. But apart from that also, the website is very clear. It says, birth certificate, proof of Ghanaian citizenship. So that is telling you that that is a primary document that proves that you're a Ghanaian citizen, isn't it? Yes, that is what is being stated there. Sure. That is what has been stated. But the point I'm also uh, making is that that alone in itself, on the form of the passport, or on the form that you need to fill or one has to fill before one will be given a passport that information alone is not enough hmm. in fact the passport office on that same form requires of the applicant to provide additional information in order for the applicant to be able to affirm or corroborate that okay. applicant's nationality. Before I get to Bobby Banson, I uh, admit mm -hmm. that admit that on the passport form, that language is provided mm -hmm. there. But I'm also submitting that beyond that language or beyond that information, an applicant must provide additional information in order to be able to authenticate whatever uh, um, whatever the applicant has provided on the form. So okay. to that extent, one can conveniently distinguish between a birth set and a passport. I would say a birth set and a passport are two evils, okay. are two necessary evils. But, but uh, just but if I get the, to uh, Bobby Banson, if, if I get to Bobby Banson, the National Identification Authority. Now they say you can submit any of the following documents. And the following documents are a birth certificate, a valid passport, and a valid certificate of acquired citizenship and any other information that's maybe required. Now, we are talking about a birth certificate, and so we say all a valid passport. That clearly indicates that the Ghana card, which has become one of the cards used in the registration, would have been acquired by people who used the birth certificate, which is not a proof of identification or evidence of citizenship, right? In that circumstance, can we say then that the national uh, the Ghana card is valid, or the Ghana card is free from persons who probably might not be Ghanaians. Yes, Honorable Ben Abdullah, if you could um, yeah. just address that for me. Oh, okay. You are speaking to me. Can you please uh, repeat your question? No, so all I'm asking is that, so if you look at the Ghana card registration, it's very clear that you could either submit, um, you know, Act 950, either a passport or a birth certificate. And there are a lot of people who use their birth certificate. So the Ghana card has become the primary document that many people are using to register for, uh, you know, voters' ID. 
that particular document has, as part of its, you know, documents, primary documents for its registration, a birth certificate which is deemed as not a proof of identification or citizenship. Doesn't that invalidate those who used it to acquire the Ghana card? I don't think it does. Like I said, let me also put this point clear before I move to your question. Now, the Supreme Court has given a ruling on the fact that you can't, uh, I mean, a birth certificate is not a document to prove one's nationality, or it's not a valid document for identification. While the Supreme Court has made that pronouncement, that pronouncement in our legal jurisprudence has become a law. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that the passport office, which is now using birth certificate as a basis for establishing nationality, must revise their notes. In like the same way, the National Identification Authority that used or is using um, birth certificate as a basis or as a primary uh, document for establishing nationality, must revise their rules. And even in fact, the legal regime that enables or mandates the National Identification Authority to use or to be using the birth set as a basis for determining somebody's Ghanaianess or nationality, that regulation or that law must be amended. Because once the Supreme Court has made a pronouncement to that effect, that law cannot any longer hold. So back to your point. Okay. So the point, the question that you ask is that National Identification Authority is also using um, a birth certificate, and doesn't that validate the card that they are issuing? I would say no. The argument that I made or the submissions that I made for the processes leading to the procurement of a passport, that same argument by necessary implication can also apply to the processes leading to the procurement of a national identification card. Because I believe you have a national identification card. I also have one. When I went to procure one, I was taken through a series of questions. I was asked questions beyond the document that I provided. I provided a passport, not a birth set. Mm. Quite apart from the provision of the passport, there was a plethora of questions that they asked me and a lot more information that I provided. The bottom line of my argument is this. National uh, birth certificate ideally would have been the best document for determining somebody's nationality. I have no doubt about it. But in our current regime, and given the structure of our um, uh, uh, births and deaths registry, mm. it becomes um, completely or, I mean, unfair or, or uh, uh, dangerous, so okay. to speak, to okay. rely or to use a birth certificate as a primary document for determining somebody's Ghanaian. But let me chip in this. Briefly before I get to the local yes. government ministry has made in parliament the registration of births and deaths act 2020 bill 2020, which is seeking to amend the existing registration and deaths, uh, I mean, the registration of births and deaths act. Now, the essence of the bill is to the effect that. Registration of births and deaths and, and fetal death will be decentralized to our districts and sub-districts. So that in every district and sub-district, we'll be having, I mean, personnel who will be picking information with respect to. Okay. All right. So that as soon as a person is delivered of a baby, the mother or the father can there and then 
we issued what a BEV certificate. Great. So can you hold on? Yes. Can you hold on? Um, let me get to uh, Bobby Banson. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to you shortly, uh, uh, Honorable Ben Abdullah. Let me also say that we've been joined by Professor Ransford Jampo, who is an Associate Professor of Political Science at the Department of Political Science, University of Ghana. But um, let me get to you, uh, Bobby Banson. So, um, Bobby, you've been listening. But if we have a problem with, uh, you know, the acquisition of birth certificates, if we think that that is not right. Shouldn't we be solving it rather than indicating that it is not a proof of uh, identification or citizenship, Bobby? Well, Bobby, um, we can't hear you. I think you have to unmute your uh, sound so we can hear you. Thanks. Yes. Can you hear me? I think we can hear yes. you now. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for having me again and uh, greetings to your listeners and viewers. I would, I, I would, um, I agree largely to the submissions by by the chairman of the constitutional committee in parliament, um, except to add that I do not think it's or saying that the Supreme Court's decision that a birth certificate is not proof of identity of um, the applicant, or as it were, um, the person applying to register, may, may be a little bit of oversimplification of actually the ratio in the case. Remember, the, 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 one of the reliefs that was sought for by the NDC and the um, other plaintiff was a declaration that the exclusion of a birth certificate as a means of proving the nationality of somebody who is seeking to register was unconstitutional. And I've, I've listened to, to, to the discussion and the analysis that you've made. Um, but I, I would just want to situate it in a context. Um, I do not think that the, the ratio by the Supreme Court, or for lack of a better word, the spirit behind the decision by the Supreme Court was that we should do away with birth certificates completely. I do not think that if we say it is no form of identity at all, I do not think that was the intention of the Supreme Court in that decision. Um, I, I think that if we put it in the context of the issues that were pending before the Supreme Court, then we'll be able to appreciate where the Supreme Court came from. Um, if you look at, and the Honor, uh, um, um, Mr. Banda has read the, the act, the, the purpose of the act as stated in a long title. But if I would want us to read Article 6, uh, okay, sorry. But first, uh, Winston, I just managed to pull out my uh, birth certificate, okay. which was issued for the purposes of our discussion. So we will look at the content, what goes into the birth certificate. Because I, 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 I think on the birth certificate, so the child's name will be there. And if, if, if you have a copy, you can confirm. The nationality of the father of the child would be there. The name, the nationality of the father the date of birth, where the child was born, the name and nationality of the mother of the child would be there. And so if I have a birth certificate, and then on a birth certificate, it is stated that my father is a Ghanaian, my mother is a Ghanaian, and then prima facie, what lawyers will say, on the face of it, it means that at the time of my birth, then I am presumed to be a Ghanaian. Because if sure. you look at Article 6, 2 of the 1992 Constitution, it says that subject to the provisions of this Constitution, a person born in or outside Ghana, after coming into the force of this Constitution, shall become a citizen of Ghana, and look at the operative word, at the date of his birth. Mm -hmm. At the date of his birth. If either of his parents or grandparents is or was a citizen of Ghana. And so my understanding of this provision, and particularly the information that goes into the birth certificate, is that if the birth certificate shows that one of your parents is a Ghanaian, then it means that at the time of your birth, then you're a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. all other things being equal. However, if you turn 18 years, and then you are going to register for the voter's ID to be able to vote, then you would have to come to Article 42. 
of the 1992 Constitution. And because it's been used several times in this space because of this court decision, Article 42 says that every citizen of Ghana of 18 years of age or above and of sound mind has a right to vote and is entitled to be registered as a voter for the purposes of public election and referenda. And so my understanding is that at the time of your birth, and judging from the way the Supreme Court approached this, at the time of your birth, if you have a birth certificate, then it qualifies you to be a Ghanaian at the time of your birth. Mm. Between the day you were born and 18 years, a lot of people change their nationality. In fact, mm. a lot of people who were born in Ghana with, a, with one of their parents being a Ghanaian do not necessarily become Ghanaian citizens. Yes, but uh, Bobby, if you look at the uh, Supreme Court judgment and if you look at the wedding critically, you've talked yes. about contest, but it says something. And so as we contextualize, let's look at it from this point of view. It says it does not establish the identity of the bearer, nor does it link the holder with the information on the certificate. Quite obviously, yes. it provides no evidence of citizenship. And the key one will be, nor does it link the holder with the information on the certificate. Isn't the Supreme Court telling you that by simply having a birth certificate, you cannot be deemed as a Ghanaian because it cannot be linked to you as you being the one who's been referred to in this particular birth certificate. It's interesting. That is why I am trying to say I would, to that extent that it makes it that simple, then I would not agree with the Supreme Court. Mm. That is why I'm trying to say that if you look at it, it provides for me prima facie evidence. And that is why I use that word. That is why, as you rightly read, when you are going to register for the national identification card, or you are going to uh, apply for a passport, mm. they would require for a birth certificate. So in that context, I think the birth certificate will qualify as prima facie evidence. However, putting it in the context of the issues that was before the Supreme, the issues that were before the Supreme Court, then the Supreme Court were right to say that the birth certificate will not be conclusive evidence. Okay. So I'm only trying to extend the wording or the ratio in the case by situa situating it in the context. Okay. Now, if the Supreme Court says that there is nothing on the birth certificate that will link the holder of the birth certificate to the information on it. Mm -hmm. If you compare it to the National Identification Authority, uh, uh, sorry, National Identification Card and the passports, which are the two forms of identity that the EC and as confirmed by the Supreme Court would be proof of nationality. You will notice that when you apply for a passport, it's biometric. And so it is not only the information on it, they actually take your fingerprints. And we know that there are no two people who would have the same fingerprints. Sure. And the same procedure is adopted for the National Identification Authority. And so if you have a birth certificate and you walk to the National Identification Authority, and then you write, you say that my name is Bobby Banson, I'm a Ghanaian, this is prima facie evidence of my Ghanaian citizenship. Mm -hmm. You provide your address, it is, it is, they have the GPS, Ghana Post Digital Address, and then they take your fingerprints. And so your birth certificate being your prima facie identification will now be the basis for them to give you a form of identification as a candidate. Exactly, but Bobby, your, your, your fingerprints does not indicate whether you're Ghanaian or not. Now, yes, yes, yes. But what I'm saying yeah. is that it links you mm -hmm. to the information contained in the passport Great. and in the information contained in your national identification so card. Let me use but myself as an, as an example. Your birth certificate. Mm. Let me yes. use myself as an example. You don't have that link so um, I have a passport which I would use to register. Now, in acquiring the passport, yes. uh, the first passport that I acquired, yes, I went with a birth certificate and I had yes. witnesses. Fine. So in acquiring another passport, I only went with my old passport and said, this is my old passport. And so based on my old passport, I am giving a new passport. Now, that yes. old passport which I presented has my birth mm -hmm. certificate, which has the names of my parents. So you can say, okay, so 
there's been some bit of witnesses in there. Put that aside. If I, for instance, got people to lie for me, people to say, oh, I know him, and then they filled it for me, how were they going to find out? One question. Two, when it comes to the Ghana card, and you're asked all these questions, what's your GPS address, where do you come from, and all of that. If I am very consistent in my lies, and I used a birth certificate, which now I am told cannot be a proof of identity, isn't it obvious then that the Ghana card that I hold, particularly the Ghana card, which would not require that I provide witnesses, there and there, the Ghana card that I hold, if I presented my birth certificate, becomes invalid by virtue of the fact that my birth certificate is not a proof of identification. I, I, I keep coming back to the point that, as far as I'm concerned, if the Supreme Court decision is interpreted to mean the birth certificate is completely no proof of identity, I do not agree. I would say that it is prima facie proof. Now, if you, if, to, your, to your analogy, you know, I'm not, there is no way there could be, or we will struggle to reach a position where there's a foolproof system. However, the system as we have will try as much as possible to eliminate the possibility of such discrepancies. Mm -hmm. If somebody is able to get a national identification card with his fingerprint, the person cannot walk to another center to procure a second identification card with different details, with the same fingerprint, you would agree. So once your fingerprint is captured on the system, you cannot go and procure another, the same with the passport. But, but the information that I provide to you, uh, together with my fingerprints, now, uh, that information could be wrong. And I mean, I could provide wrong information, which I would have rehearsed. And so if I go out there and you ask me, where do you come from? I say, I come from this place. What's your father's name? I mentioned my father's name. And there and there, mind you, we have this situation where we're giving instant cards. So mind you, if I tell you this is my father's name, that is my mother's name, you're not going to check me. You give me the card. Once I get the card, I go ahead yeah. and do things with a card. Okay, so the point is that the birth certificate here, as is indicated by the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs, is a proof of identification. Now the Supreme Court, let me just add this, that the Supreme Court actually in the judgment first and foremost, indicates that when it comes to the usage of uh, the birth certificate as a primary document registration, that has not yeah. been the case. Because in CI 72 and CI 91, the birth certificate was not part of the document. And so there's nothing wrong with CI 126 not including the birth certificate because it has never been part of it. So that was established. Then they go on to now pronounce that the birth certificate cannot be a proof of identification. I'll come back to you, but I need to get to uh, Professor Ransford Jampo, who's joined us. Um, you and Honorable Banda have uh, taken us through the legal bit. We'll come back to the le uh, legal issues of it all. But um, let me get to Professor Jampo and find out from him what he makes of it from a political perspective, because I'm sure that he also might have registered with uh, for his passport, you know, with uh, his birth certificate. Professor Jampu, thank you very much for uh, joining us. So here we are. Uh, I'm sure you've been listening to the lawyers, but you've also uh, been following the conversation where the Supreme Court has told us that uh, um, birth certificate cannot be an identification, uh, cannot be a proof of identification. What do you make of this, and what do you think could be uh, the impact, particularly when it comes to our political discourse, Professor Jambo. So, Professor Jampo, I don't know if you've um, uh, muted your uh, laptop. You could unmute it uh, so that we can, can you hear, hear you. Me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, go ahead. Yes, um, um, thanks for um, the opportunity. The Supreme Court, which is the apex court of the land, the highest um, court of the land has given a judgment, and I'm told it was, was it a unanimous decision. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, as a political scientist, such a unanimous decision becomes a law. Um, so it's a new law that binds all of us. All other implications must be reworked. Um, they have made it clear that um, the use of um, birth certificate um, is no longer 
um, a form of proving one's identification. And, um, and if that is what um, they think is the, is the case, I mean, so be it. Um, there have been a lot of challenges with um, ABEV certificates over the years. And I remember um, some few uh, months ago, the registrar of birth and death registry came out quite strongly, um, arguing that um, they want the, their registry to be an autonomous agency, um, not operating in the shackles or uh, in the shackles of the uh, district assembly system okay. and all that, because that tend to politicize their uh, um, their activities. And we are told that um, sometimes some politicians would want to hack into the system or influence who gets uh, registered uh, by birth and and who does not um, get registered and all that. So there are challenges coupled with the fact that the certificates that are issued um, are oftentimes not also um, biometric. They don't have um, biometric features. They are prone to be manipulated and all that. There are so many fraudulent means of procuring uh, birth certificates. I'm not talking about those who are born and they are issued with certificates. But you and I know that in Ghana, there's happened several times where people were looking for passports um, and then they were told, well, you need a birth certificate. And they, they did all they could, you know, using all manner of corrupt means to get one and all that. So, well, if the Supreme Court believe that um, it is no longer a credible identification, they are not talking about proof of citizenship. They are saying um, it is not... Uh, a, a means to identify um, one uh, uh, in terms of anything, I think it's a new law. And like you said, um, it should have some implications for those of us who uh, registered or procured a Ghana card through the birth certificate. I don't know whether it will mean they will have to recall um, our cards and ask for other forms of identification or, or whatever. But um, it's a law, and unless the Supreme Court is willing to review its decision, it's a new law that we must all comply with. Mm. That question that you've asked, let me get to um, you know the lawyers to get a bit of uh, understanding from it, because we know that uh, in the past, when uh, the uh, you know health insurance card was deemed not to be a proof of identity, all those who were registered with a health insurance card had to be given a chance to re-register. So, um, coming to you, Honorable Ben Abdullah Banda. Under the circumstance, for instance, can it be the case uh, that for those of us who used birth certificates in the acquisition of, say, a Ghana card, be given a chance to show other forms of identification in order to, in, in, in order to acquire those cards? Or we could just go ahead and that will be the end of it? I, I, I don't think that uh, the um, Supreme Court uh, ruling or judgment of the person is by necessary implication saying that all those who have the national uh, ID cards and uh, who so acquired this card, these cards by um, the by birth certificate, uh, these cards are no longer valid. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, decision uh, is not to that effect. So what I will say uh, is that, uh, yes, you acquired it, uh, by the use of a birth certificate, uh, but um, the, the fact of the matter still remains that a lot more information was obtained from you than the mere uh, uh, presentation of a birth certificate. And let me also make this point that uh, if you look at the features, the features on a national identification card or the features on a passport. You realize that there are a lot more features on a passport or on an ID card than a birth certificate. And for ID card and a passport, you have your picture. So that document can uh, conclusively uh, be referable to you. On, uh, whereas for a birth certificate, there's no such picture on it. And you also recall or know that before a national ID card is given to you, a passport is given to you, 
like my colleagues have rightly pointed out, they take your fingerprint. But for a birth certificate, that is not done. And quite apart from that, the law establishing the, the birth and death registry or the law regulating the procurement of birth certificates is to the effect that a birth certificate only establishes evidence of birth. It doesn't establish. There's no way in the law that says that if you procure a birth certificate, that goes to establish your nationality. There's no way that the law provides that. So that extent, if you have a death certificate, that can only establish, uh, I mean, evidence of... of yes, birth. but um, Bobby, Bobby's and made like the point. For example, pointed mm -hmm. out, let me end by saying that now people can just walk into the office of death and death and easily procure a death set. But it's not so if you want to procure a I'm not saying that there, there are some non Ghanaians who cannot procure, their, I mean, passport. There are, but the fact of the matter is that it is easier if you want to, I mean, procure a bear set than if a non Ghanaian wants to procure a yeah. Winston, before, before um, Honorable Abdullah goes, I, I think I want sure. to make a little intervention. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you see, there are consequential implications. Um, of the court ruling for those of us who are welding um, um, uh, Ghana card who used um, the birth, certi our birth certificates as a form of identification. And rather than assuming that um, um, it would not mean anything and that those of us welding the card are safe, um, you want a certain clarity to prevent situations where uh, at the point that it matters that you want to use your card, somebody takes you to court and say that, have you forgotten that the court has given a ruling that um, if you used um, the birth certificate as a form of identification in procuring your Ghana card, your Ghana card is not valid. And so there should be um, some clarity. We, we just should not assume. We've assumed all this while that... Um, uh, birth certificates are uh, forms of identification until um, this, um, um, the ruling that just came up. And so for me, it is important that we are clear in our mind as to the forms of identification. And so if the um, um, our birth certificates are, are no longer valid, then if they actually goes on to invalidate um, our, our Ghana card, so be it. Let them give us new cards and let us find other um, acceptable uh, forms of identification to procure uh, Ghana cards. So there should be clarity, very important. Mm -hmm. But talking about the clarity, maybe you can take it on. Uh, you can go to the Supreme Court and seek interpretation and say, well, this is the situation we find ourselves in if well, you know, <laughs> they, they want to tell us what to do. Maybe you can do that. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, we, we are not too much of a litigious society and so we we tend to we tend to relax about some of these things but um well it's it's, it's something that somebody can try maybe not necessarily me but uh, uh we, we can try it so that um we are not um disappointed um at a time that it matters and at a time that we need our card uh, most mm -hmm. so, so let me get to Ben abdallah so that he uh, yeah. you know wraps up for yeah, me can I yes Ben abdallah <laughs> Uh, he's asked that question whether it probably might not be time for us to get clarity on all of this because we know that in previous uh, situations, for instance, the Abu Ramadan case, for instance, uh, they went back to court and sought clarity. The court gave them clarity. So maybe we should be seeking clarity when it comes to all of this. But, but uh, let me make this point that once the Supreme Court did not make any pronouncement on the validity or otherwise of the existing national. Uh, ID cards that we all have, and there is no law prescribing the use of the, these national ID cards. We, those of us still holding the national ID cards, can use the national ID, the, the national ID cards for all purposes until and unless somebody goes to the Supreme Court for the petition, and the Supreme Court makes a pronouncement to that effect. And that's actually the point. Uh, shouldn't we be seeking yeah, that's the point I'm making. that right now? now? Mm -hmm. 
shouldn't you be seeking that clarity now? Shouldn't someone be taking the matter to court for a clarification once and for all so that we don't have to come back after some time and say this is a situation we find ourselves in? Yes, somebody can go and try it and see. Mm. <laughs> I see. Well, well Robin Abela, thank you. You have to leave us. Uh, it's been uh, great having you. Let me come to you, uh, Bobby Banson. So, um, Bobby, now the... On that point about uh, yes. seeking interpretation, mm -hmm. you know the, the maxim, one of the maxims of our judicial system is that laws are not intended to have retrospective effect sure. unless expressly stated. So, assuming without admitting that indeed the Supreme Court's decision has rendered any other identification that was procured using the birth certificate as the base, then it may not necessarily put it prospectively to invalidate anything that has been done unless the Supreme Court expressly stated so. So to that extent, I believe that we are quite safe. Should, people should not panic. Mm -hmm. So we should, take, we, should, we should take our card and sin no more. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, well, so yes, you can actually have your card. And um, well, you, you, no, no, you, you, you haven't sinned. Uh, uh, you know, at the time you were using those cards, you probably knew that they were, uh, you know, acceptable, except that now you're told that they can't be, uh, you know, proof of uh, identification. But um, so, Bobby, let me uh, get back to you. And, and I just want your take on this. So, this bit about. Uh, Honorable Abdullah makes the point also, uh, the, 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 the point that, and you have made it, that we know that, you know, the circumstances surrounding the acquisition of birth certificates are problematic. Now, if that is problematic, it has to be solved. How does that get to affect what the birth certificate can do? Hello, Bobby? Well, um, yes, yes I, I, I believe that would be um, a governance issue. Um, as for the Supreme Court, they were faced with a particular set of facts and issues and they delivered their opinion on it. I don't think that we needed to, or this Supreme Court decision is what would highlight the problems at the birth and death registry. It's something that has been in the media space that we've been aware of for some time. So I think that uh, it, it, I agree with you that um, whoever is in charge or those authorities that are in charge must do the needful to make sure that the whole registry is sanitized, not only for the purposes of, I mean, pursuant to this Supreme Court case, but for our own good. Because in, you know, the problem is that we do not have a system where you are issued with a pass, a birth certificate or a passport within days of delivery. Because in in America, for instance, if a child is given birth to within 24 hours, he has a birth certificate, which would have the details and then the address where the passport should be. And then within a month or two, maximum, there's a passport for, for, for the child. And we don't have that system. And so it gives room for people to come back at any time, <laughs> come and then take the details on their birth certificate. And so if you could have a system where the birth certificate is issued almost immediately upon delivery, then it will, it will take away some of these or it will plug some of these holes. Mm. So I believe that is where we, we should focus. But... As for the Supreme Court judges, they were some issues were brought to them, and they have delivered their opinion. And Let me they will leave the rest for that, those in charge of governance um, to, to make sure that they, they, they do what they have to do. Let me get to Professor Jampo finally, and I heard him laughing. Uh, Professor Jampo, finally, uh, when Bobby made the point about uh, what, what is the case in America. Well, I do know that Ghana, uh, one, one or two weeks after delivery, you can actually get a birth certificate for your child. Um, but um, in many of the instances, it takes a bit of time. But you were laughing um, in, in, in wrapping up. Uh, but, but I also would want to know why you were uh, laughing. Oh, oh well, the, the, <laughs> the way he painted the problem, I mean, <laughs> um, you could just um, be born today and then you go some few months time, you go and populate information on your <laughs> certificate, <laughs> take some out and mm. add or subtract and all that, I mean. Well, generally, there are challenges with the system, and um, I'm happy you mentioned there are issues that pertain to governance. We must overhaul the system, and as I indicated earlier on, I had the birth and de death, um, the head of the birth and death registry uh, making some of these points, as, uh, calling for um, solutions and also insisting that um, they want um, the birth and death registry to be an autonomous
um, registry that would be able to work independently from manipulations and, and partisan political control. There are politicians who go there to this, de determine who has been um, born and who must get, who must be registered and all that, all mm -hmm. for um, political reasons and all that. And so it is important we take some of these things seriously. I mean, within 24 hours of birth, you have your um, 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 your birth certificate, and if it is possible for you to have your biometric features captured on it, so be it. Within um, a few weeks, you get a passport in a manner akin to what pe um, pertains to other developed countries. And we should generally overhaul the processes so that okay. um, we, we do not completely discard our birth um, 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 certificates, because um, I think we cannot simply say that, well, if the Supreme Court has said that the birth certificates are not forms of identification, and that would necessarily mean that so when one is born, one wouldn't need a certificate. I'm thinking what uh, would have to do proactively as a people, as a nation, is to fashion out ways and means we, um, um, in which we can fine tune the processes and the system to ensure that we get credible um, birth certificates that can stand the test of time, that can wield the necessary features that can make um, it serve as both a proof of citizenship and then also mm -hmm. an adequate proof of identification. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ransford Jampo, who is uh, Associate Professor of Political Science at the Department of Political Science of the University of Ghana. Uh, finally, Bobby, I give you 30 seconds. We're going. Well, I, I like I indicated, uh, my position is that the birth certificate can at best be a prima facie evidence of, of your nationality, and then you would have to then confirm the details thereon by procuring a national identification authority, uh, sorry, national identification card or a passport. And that the Supreme Court has sort of made it imperative that if you want to prove your nationality as a Ghanaian, we will not rely on only your birth certificate for all the reasons that we have discussed okay. this evening, and that you need to go a step further by confirming the details on your birth certificate with procuring a national identification card or a passport. And of course, you can't use the uh, you know, birth certificate as the primary document. Thank you very much, uh, Bobby Banson. I was a private legal I, I, I keep saying it's a prima facie evidence. To that extent, <laughs> well, I disagree well, with the Supreme Court. Well, uh, that's, why, that's, why, that's why it's important we get clarification. We would get that clarification. <laughs> uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that clarification goes. Um, thank you very much, <clears throat> Bobby Banson. And uh, a big thank you also to Member of Parliament for Offenso South and the Chairman of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee in Parliament, Honorable Ben Abdel. My name is Winston Amwa. Thank you so much for being part of us. Uh, this evening on behalf of the team we're grateful up next is join news prime keep watching uh, join news channel we're out